There is no one way to do something. There is no one technique, no one color, no one style, no certain amount of water, no certain kind of brush stroke, no certain kind of anything. You can have a rough idea in your mind and try and with whatever different paints you're using, whatever different colors, whatever different water, whatever different techniques you choose to try, you will get very different results. Every time you try it, you learn something. And every time you try it, you get a different result, which is kind of fun. That's part of the fun of watercolor. You need to go with the flow, literally, because you can't control watercolor. You can try, you can help hem it in, you can help direct it, but you cannot control watercolor. So you have to let go of that kind of control and learn to cooperate with your paints, the pigments, the qualities that each one of them have, and the quality that each type of brush or thing that you use has. There is no one way to do it. There is no wrong way. Hi, good morning. We get to do some watercolor this morning. First off, remember there is no wrong way to do this. Every way you try it is gonna be different and you're just supposed to have fun. So let's start with that. I did tape down my paper because when you water, add water to it, it tends to buckle. You can also use clips they don't quite work as well, but they work. I've also got mine inclined on a little bit of an angle. I'll show you why. Have some paper towel. And um, I like to start off by, well, I like to have a misty bottle anyway, but I used to like to start off and wet down my paints a little bit because it takes a little bit to activate the dry paints. And that way they're ready to go when you're ready to use them. And this all, little mister also makes a little bit quicker work of wetting down the paper. We're gonna do the waterfalls that I showed you earlier. So we're gonna wet down the paper and just to get us started. Just give us a little bit of lubrication. You can use a brush to wipe it in if you want to, or you don't have to, different techniques. But sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of water to go with. I'm gonna to try to stick with kind of neutral colors um, every paint set it is different, so your results may vary. Just enjoy the process. Uh, we're going to start off by making our path for our waterfall by kind of setting up the cliff. And I'm going to use orange and kind of a purple. And they're going to naturally create a brown for me that's a little bit more interesting. You get your neutral colors on a color wheel by matching colors on opposite sides of the wheel. So I'm gonna just start off with some purple or some orange here and we'll add some purple in a minute. So you're gonna just wet your brush and get some paint on it. Hopefully it's lubed up a little bit there. Just kind of think, a lot of times, especially with nature stuff, you just wanna kind of think like what you're doing. So I'm just kind of thinking that's the top of a hill coming down to the side, maybe the water's going to run down, the water's going to actually run down the middle here, and just kind of let it go. I'm going to kind of do the same thing on the other side to create the other side of the waterfall. So I'm going to kind of get my channel here, and just let it go. Get some of the rocks set up here at the top. It's okay if it loses a little bit on the way down. We're going to add other stuff and just kind of whatever you feel like that you think might be fun. There is no wrong way to do it. You might need to rewater your brush. Sometimes I'll take the excess drips off by having a, I have an old thing here so I don't have to use a paper towel every time. I save my paper towels for when I want to do some other stuff. So we're just going to kind of make that mountain. Now in my case, I've already tested my paints, so I know what kind of color combinations I like with my set. Here's an example that I've got going. You can see that I've already tested 
some of my opposites to get neutrals that I like. I've got some that are more reddish brown, some that are more greenish brown. I really like this one. This is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use my orange and my purple. You can try that as well, just for a start, but there are other ways to make neutrals and you'll be able to try them. Um, another thing I want to point out is I mixed this one. These are the two colors. I mixed this one on the fly wet on the paper versus this one. I mixed the colors up in a pan on the side. And to me, this looks more vibrant and interesting and you get more color variation than when I pre-mix them. That looks a little flat. So that's what we're actually gonna do on the paper. It's easier to do while they're still wet. And they're still wet mostly right now. I'm gonna wet down my brush a little, grab some purple. And I'm just gonna kind of add that in there. And you can see that it's making a nice brown for me. And I wanna kind of run this down along the edge here because whenever you have an edge at a water's edge, or on a mountain or anything, uh, you're gonna get a little bit darker on the edge because as it gets further away from you, it's gonna get dark down by the water. So I'm just gonna kind of follow this down. You don't have to be that exact. Just add in some shades for some of my, my rocks here. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. The wetter it is, the more the colors will mix. That's why they mixed a little bit better up at the top here. So you get the browns. Okay. And if we want to be really tricky, one of the things I like to do is, it's getting a little dry for me down here. It didn't quite blend as nice, and I want to get more of a flow because we're doing water. It's Granted, this is the rock part, but it's still water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tip this up a little bit, and I'm gonna spray a little bit more water on it. I'm gonna leave the top alone a little bit because that was going pretty good. It's one of the upsides and one of the downsides of watercolor is it's water reactive. So even after you think it's kind of dry, it will still flow. This has a little bit in here that I don't like because it's right where I'm going to have my water flow. So we're going to clean that up a little bit. Use a paper towel or a tissue. I kind of like how this is run down here. I like the look of that. I'm going to encourage that a little bit by adding a little bit more paint and just kind of encouraging that to streak down a little bit because it looks kind of cool. And you could do that with either the colors that you want to use. I'm going to use a little bit of both so I can get some of that brown going on again. And just kind of go with your gut, kind of what you feel like your little mountain and waterfall is going to look like. And I'm just going to encourage that to go down just a little bit more because it's kind of cool. Other things you can do is you can have a straw. I don't have, happen to have one up here right off. Not close. Um, you can also blow on it. You can get the water to spread out a little bit. You can get it to streak down a little bit. Get some different marks, which are kind of fun. So we'll put that back over here. I like how that's going. Now we're gonna add a little bit of a mountain behind it too, if you maybe remember from the, the preview. And this one I'm gonna use just a little bit of different color so I can get a little variety. But I wanna keep it light and bright. I kinda of like the light and bright feel here. So I'm gonna take my yellow, and uh, it's pretty dry up there. So this is a little bit different. We wet the other one down and used a wet brush. In this case, my paper's wet up there, so what I'm gonna do, and you might not be able to see it on the camera, is I'm gonna make lines like a mountain back here. Kind of make a little triangle there. Yep, just with wet water. And then what I'm gonna do is pick up some color. In this case, I'm gonna start with the yellow. And I'm just gonna kind of drop it in. And because it's wet, the water will kind of go its own way. You can kind of guide it along its path too but it'll spread out a little differently. I really like dropping in water on my pictures because you get some really cool effects. 
So we're going to do some more of that. So that's just kind of the base color. Now let's use a little bit of the uh, purple and the orange that we've been using. I'm going to use a little bit of the, the orange on this side. And I'm just going to add that in there. You can drop it in and you'll watch it spread out. Depending how much water's on there, you'll watch it spread more than others. And give it a little style and a little sheen over here. And I'm going to use a little bit of the purple on the other side. So using the purple and the orange brings the colors up into the other part of the painting. So even though we're getting a little bit different color combination here, it's giving us a harmony because the colors match back in. And we're just going to let that go. I'm going to put a little bit here because this is the bottom of the mountain. I'm just going to make sure that it's kind of got that going on. If you think that it's too dark or you don't quite like the color or you want to re-go at it, you can go ahead and take your paper towel and just go say, oh, I'm not quite sure I like that color. You can also take some of your watercolor or paint out by getting your brush. You're going to wet down the brush, then you're going to dry it off a little bit. Makes it a little bit drier and it'll soak up some of the moisture in the paint. So if you don't quite like it or you want to try something different, you can do that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and re-wet that down. I'm going to re-put in some of that purple. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of that yellow back in here. Let the yellow come on top of the purple. That way it'll make it a little bit more of a highlight. Drop some of that orange back in. Let it do its thing. I want a little bit more purple over there, so I'm going to go ahead and add that and go. Whoosh. You kind of again, just kind of think about what you're doing. So when you get on a mountain, you get some of these little angles where the little mini valleys where the light hits differently. Sometimes it'll be light, sometimes it'll be shadow. And you're just going to kind of accentuate that. Another way to kind of accentuate that is. A lot of times you'll get a direct line off of the mountain where it's like one way is one way and the other side is the other side. So one will be light and one will be dark. And you can do it that way as well. Same thing if you want to encourage those to go off a little bit. If you want to have a little fun play and just go, ooh. Whatever you feel like. Add in lines, add in color, add in little little sass, that's all good. And we've got kind of our basis here. Um, we worked on here, up here, so that this would have a chance to dry before we did more work with it. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some little rocks in here too, because our water's gonna go around some rocks. And I'm using the same colors that I used to make the waterfall down here. And I, so I put the orange for a start and I'm going to go ahead and drop some purple in there and just let it mix right there. Give me a nice rock color. Give me a nice dark brown. And those will be the rocks that are sitting there. Now the edge here has lightened up a little bit. So we want to darken that back in a little bit, give it a little bit more dark. So I'm going to use both. I want to get more of a brown, so I want to keep it wet. I'm going to wet down my brush a little bit. But I'm going to get some fresh orange in here. Just kind of follow my contour down. And I'm going to go ahead and add some purple into that too, right off the bat. Oop, got a little drip there. Let's get that off of there. that in. I don't want any of those hard edges so much on that side. That's why I'm going to go ahead and I'm adding water because it's water reactive, watercolors. I can smooth it out and makes it look a little bit more harmonious as well. I want to add in a little bit of rock direction here. Add in a little bit of shade under here. So I'm kind of starting to form my rocks. I can do that also with shape. So I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to say that there's a shape here of a rock outcropping. 
And I'm going to say that there's a shape here of a rock outcropping. There might be part of one here. And I'm going to start carving those out a little bit more. So darks add two different dimensions when you're doing painting or color. Sometimes they push things further back and make them look further away. And also, you'll tend to use more darks when you get in the front. Now with watercolor, you'll notice I've left a lot of white on here because in watercolor, unlike usually acrylics or definitely oils, those you work from the darkest colors and you work your way up to your light colors. When you're doing watercolors, you have to go just the opposite. You're going to work from light to dark. And you want to maintain some of those nice whites that you have because those are your highlights and you don't want to lose those. And a watercolor, the beauty of watercolor is, is it's translucent. So it kind of lets colors show through each other and lets other things show through each other. And you want to enjoy that. And a lot of times that makes the white your light source and your brightness. So same thing, I'm just kind of going down this edge over here. And same thing, I'm going to come up with some of my shapes. I think I've got outcropping here. I think I'm going to have an outcropping over here. Oh, that got a little too wet, so what I did is I dried off my brush, and I'm going to soak some of that up. And I'm going to add some purple under here. can further define those later as, as we want to. But I want to give them a chance to dry before I add more on there because if I do too much it'll start smearing right off. And we want to work on the water now. Now in nature again it's kind of fun to think about how nature works and why it works the way it does. So for this waterfall, I want us to think about how the water works, and you're going to have um, clear water. I usually have two waters on the side, you can't see them. One that I used to clean off my dirtiest brush when I switch between colors, and then one on the side that I try to keep clean so I can get it extra clean, or to be able to use clean water. In this case, we're going to start kind of like we did that top mountain. We're going to go ahead and add our water in. So I've got clean water on my brush, and I'm just going to kind of pretend I'm the water and watch my little water bead go down here and follow the water flow down my waterfall. And you're gonna need more water as you go, so just go ahead and add it in. So I know where my water's going. It's like, oh yeah, there it is. It's gonna crash over there, it's gonna come under, it's gonna go down, it's a happy little waterfall. And we got this going. I got a little close to my rock there, it's starting to bleed. And then I want to go ahead and encourage those water drops coming down here too. So I'm going to add more water up here and just watch it flow down. I've created a path of water so it's going to naturally want to follow those paths. And you'll be able to see it even better once you do that. So there might be other areas you want to tap some extra water into and get them to come down. And I'm going to tilt this up a little bit so I can get the water to encourage it to go down a little bit. Now for the fun part, I'm going to go ahead and get into one of my blues. And I'm going to start it up here and let it kind of follow the water down. So it's literally creating its own waterfall. The water is creating its own waterfall, which is kind of cool. And it's following the path that we already laid with the water. So it's going to pick up some of its own highlights and stuff. So instead of overworking, we're going to go ahead and let the water create its own path and its own color combinations. It's going to create its own variances in color too for a large part. 
And I just want to make sure I get enough color going in here to go all the way down the drops. You might have to add some more in as you go. If you have single drops down there, you can just add some color. That's kind of fun. It's always a fun thing to do. I'm just going to encourage a few other marks down here. Same thing that we did with the rocks, we can do here. We can go ahead and tilt it. If you've got enough water, it'll go down. Sometimes you can help it a little bit. Boom. You can also blow on it. Now, if I want to go back and add a little bit more darks or a little bit more highlights, I can. I've got a darker blue, so I have my lighter blue. I've got a little bit darker blue here, and I'm just going to go tap some of that in. It'll add a little bit more color variation for me. And just kind of let it go through and bleed through as it's doing. A lot of times you'll put colors like this on and you'll say, oh my gosh, it's too dark, it's too bright, oh, oh, oh. With watercolor, it always dries lighter than you think it's going to. So you've usually got a lot more leeway. So that's pretty cool. The next thing we're gonna try that's kind of fun, especially with water, if you're afraid about messing up your mountains up here, you can always kind of cover them up. But I'm gonna take some of that water, so my brush is really kind of sloppy wet, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my blue. And uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and tap the brush and give myself some water splatters. This is water. Of course it's gonna splatter when it gets down there. You can see it gets out of control, so if you don't want it all up there, you can just cover it up, keep it down towards the bottom. You can also change the angle that you're doing your water drips at. and give yourself some drops. If you don't like them, or you're worried about these drops up here, I can go ahead and clean off my water brush and just kind of take those off of there, make them go away a little bit. Just add enough water, they'll bleed right out. Down here where you've got color, as long as the, those rocks are dry, you'll be able to pick it right off or just blend it in. Just add a little bit of character. If you want to leave it on there, you can. Gives it a little bit of vibrancy in life. Any extra dots you want to add water into or things you want to do. If you want to make some swirls down here, you can. You can help show the water path. The wetter it is, the more it's going to do things. If you want to, you're like, oh, I don't really like that. It's a little too much. You can go back in and smooth it out a little bit. You can't go wrong. Water's always going to flow. It's going to do its own thing. Um, if you get really bombed out and really bummed, you can always go ahead and do this. You want to be careful because you don't want to reactivate the stuff on the sides, which will reactivate a little bit. But if you're kind of careful, that's mostly dry and the wetter part is mostly wet. And you can, again, encourage it to run down a little bit and do its own thing. Give it a little bit more texture and, and fun. There you go. So we've got our water. Last thing I wanted to add in was some, some greenery along the sides. Give it a little bit more fun. You can leave it just right here if you want to. That's absolutely fine. Or you can add on some other stuff. I'm going to add on a little bit of a lighter green and then a darker green. Or actually I'm going to try a yellow. I do have a lighter green here, but mine is kind of opaque and I haven't liked it as much for some of this. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to add some yellow. And if I use yellow first, I can always add blue into it, like we did add the purple and the orange together and it'll make a green that's really pretty. Or I can add a green to it. Uh, it's a little soupier than I would like. and it'll still make it so it has like highlights built in. Let the paint do the work for you. So 
So in this case, I'm gonna actually grab some of my darker green. Looks like my yellow went down just a little bit wetter than I would like. I'm gonna just add in some of this green here. So it gives it some light and dark contrast, makes it look a little bit cooler, like you've got some little trees and bushes going on here. We're gonna add some on this other side too. Again, I'm gonna start with the yellow just a little bit. I'm gonna put some up here. Up, oh, that's too wet. Too wet, I just go ahead and drop it drop it back off. Pick up some other stuff. Maybe we even have some greenery just kind of dripping off down here, right off the edge. Oh, I got a little bit too much moisture on there. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that drip off. And I've got this cool little rock cropping out here, so I want to do something just a little bit different with it. What I want to do is I want to uh, build a little tree here. And since I don't have a brown on my palette, I'm going to have to build the tree trunk color kind of the same way I built my other color. Now, I can premix it on the side, which in this case, having it be a little flat might not be such a bad idea, but I think I'm going to just risk it. And I'm going to start off with a little bit of orange. I like this just because it's kind of an oriental style. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to create kind of a tree trunk here. It's going to have some little branches going off. Maybe some other little branches too. Now, in this case, I found I've had problems unless I dry off my brush more. I gotta have enough moisture on my paint to get paint because I want them to mix, but if it's too glooshy slooshy, it just makes a big mess. Now, see, the advantage of this too is that it gives you more variation in your color. So it's already like you did fancy techniques and you didn't. You just let the paint do its little thing, and it was awesome. I'm going to treat this kind of the same way. I'm going to go ahead and put some yellow on here first and then add some other color so we can keep it a little lighter and brighter. So there's some little bushy tree bits. And then I'm going to add in some of that green again. And I'm going to put the darker more towards the bottom, leave some of that light at the top so it looks like the light's kind of hitting it and it's getting some sunlight. You don't have to do this kind of tree. If you want to do a fall tree, you can use orange and red. You can do a pine tree that's a little bit more piney. Um, any kind of tree you want. Or you don't have to. Again, just a little bonus extra tree here because what cliff doesn't need a cool tree growing on it? I mean, really. All right, and I'm just gonna add in a little bit of that blue or the purple. I think I'm gonna add in some of the blue from the water because we don't really have that anyplace else. I'm gonna just add in little touches in here and it'll add a little bit more darks, plus it'll bring the blue back into this other side of the painting so it doesn't look like it's just by its little self. There we go. I can even add a little bit in here if I want to darken up some root here. Maybe make a little knot in the tree, do some cool stuff, little extras. There we go. And pretty much let it dry at this point. 
most of it's dry already. If you wanted to go back and add any more detail into any of the, the rocks or things over there, you can, but there you have it. I hope to be able to see some of your creations in a few minutes and see how everybody else's came out as well. Thank you very much.